Hey, YouTube's recommended videos are one of Earth's biggest mysteries, along with things like the identity of the Zodiac Killer and the reason why men have nipples. It'll recommend you anything and everything, ranging from the more simple and casual Minecraft Let's Play videos, to the more unusual guy reviewing lockpicks, and to the more hardcore, huge dick, big balls, Kirby Live Radio. But recently, the brain dead baby monkey that single handedly operates the recommended section of YouTube decided to actually recommend me something relevant for once. Mr. Krabs Overdoses and Ketamine is the name of the game. As I read these words, my hands instinctively reached for my wallet, and with inhuman speed and sleight of hand, I pulled out my credit card, only to discover that the game was in fact free. Things just kept getting better. I opened up the game, and I was immediately surprised, not by the great art that we are presented with in the main menu, but rather by the noise my GPU started making. Now, I have an RTX 2060 which is usually pretty tame when it comes to noise, but that bitch started to sound like a goddamn fucking Apache attack helicopter. I initially thought it was maybe some background noise from some hentai that I left open somewhere in Firefox, but in the end it just turned out to be my graphics card, demonstrating its happiness to be rendering such a masterpiece of the game. Mr. Krabs woke up in front of a motel in what I can only assume is the day after one of the best orgies of his life. I then started to get used to the controls, running, tactically rolling, crouching, and boxing my imaginary enemies. All of the things that crabs are known to do. Like any good ketamine addict, the next thing I did was steal a boat. And my first driving experience in this game went just like I expected. I fucking died. But for every time life fucks you in your tiny booty hole, it also gives you a pet on the head. I had evolved into a higher species, higher than humans could ever dream of. I became a flying crab. Unfortunately, that bit of happiness was short-lived, for my boat, like my hopes and dreams, left me, and I regressed back to a mere terrestrial crab. Now I was left hopeless boatless and with some suspicious twitching on my crustacean limbs as I gazed at the JPEG of the sky. I then realized what my mission here was. Just like the name of the game, I had to find some ketamine so I could end all of my suffering. I went back to the motel to pick up some ketamine that one of the prostitutes had dropped. After that, I ran. Then I ran. And when I got tired of running, I ran some more and finally made my way to swimsuit substructure or whatever the fuck that town is called. I grabbed some more ketamine. Tried to high five some nerdy ass fish, but he wasn't quick enough, that's on him. Grab some more ketamine, some asshole then tried to mug me for my ketamine, but I didn't fucking let him. I stole that ketamine, that shit's mine. His friend tried to finish the job, but I also gave him the old one too. And in the surge of ketamine abstinence induced rage, I clapped nerdy fish number one's twin brother. By the way, the enemies in this game actually don't slap you with their fins like I thought they did. They actually, they fucking shank you. Just listen to that shit. After that, I stole another boat and made my way to a pineapple, in front of which I found Porous Robert rectangular trousers and listened to his plead. Please, Mr. Krabs, I need you to get my catamid. It's in the town over there. Please, Mr. Krabs, I'm fiending. In a sudden turn of events, I realized that I was, in fact, SpongeBob's plug, and all the ketamine I'd collected up until that point was for him. I didn't really want to part ways with the ketamine I earned through hard work, sweat, and physical aggression, but he seemed like he needed it more than me. I went back in town to grab the last bit of ketamine I needed, and gave it all to the little yellow man in front of the pineapple. Wait, did I say man? Holy fuck, thank you so much, Mr. Krabs. Oh, you're a lifesaver. If you want to go get more good stuff, go see Patrick. He's on the other end of town. I now had to get across town to meet the pink starfish. I tried saying hi to my ex-girlfriend in town but she didn't answer, stole the third boat in a span of 5 minutes, and then I met up with Patrick Star's cooler uncle, Crack Rick Scar. Whoa Mr. Krabs, you're still doing ketamine? <coughs> what the fuck? You need to get on that new shit. Take a man's life! <laughs> Crackrick told me about some new drug called taking a man's life. I didn't know what it was, but as long as I could directly inject it into my dick veins, then I was all for it. For the third fucking time, I went into town to accomplish my mission, take the lives of four men, which was weird because there were no men down in the sea. I had found my first target, and with my BIG MEATY I ripped his throat open, just like when, like when you eat a Doritos and one of the bits wasn't chewed enough so it just fucking slices the inside of your throat on the way down. 
familiar fucking place, trash. Now, you might be thinking, holy fucking shit, Mr. Krabs, why are you killing all these innocent fish people? And to that I say, how do you know they were innocent? I mean, these four guys are practically twins. For all I know, they could have been a gang of serial child fish rapists. Or like, they could have been doing experiments to, like, alchemically change their kids into other animals like Full Metal Alchemist. So, you know, perhaps the underwater world is better off without them. Who knows? After finishing my assassination mission, I return to my pink leader for my next command. You know that you're an epic gamer? Go suck off Squidward! <laughs> ah yes, there's nothing more gamer than scavenging for ketamine and serial killing. But anyway, I went to the Krispy crowd to suck Squidward's tentacle dicks, but when I got there, Squidward just stared at me. It was then that I realized that, much to my surprise, there were bugs in this game. Yeah, who would have thought? I tried exiting and re-entering the building, but even then Squidward refused to have his dick sucked. What a fucking asshole. After giving up on the idea of elating him, I went back to flying with my boat, since that sparked me more joy than actually doing ketamine. The boat, however, wasn't having none of that shit, and tried to run away into the water. Little did his dumb ass know, my ketamine addiction gave me the ability to walk on water. Thus, I turned into Jesus Krabs. I got bored of boat flying, so I decided to restart the game in order to actually complete it. Now I had to do all of this shit, all over again. Joy. At least this time around, Squidward was willing to get sucked off. Hey, hey Mr. Krabs, I need you to sell these trucks to the city. She's in town, make sure you get my money. And thus, I was off to visit Miss Sandy Ashcheeks to collect Squidward's money. That bitch had a history of double-crossing Squidward out of his ketamine money, but not this time. Also, for whatever fucking reason, the camera was now inside of me. After giving it some thought, I assumed the developer did this on purpose, as a symbolism for the player becoming one with Mr. Krabs and his dissociative anesthesia-inducing drug addiction. And that, kids, is what we call good story writing. I finally met up with a dirty crack whore chipmunk, and she told me this. Did you catch all that? Well I fucking did it, but that doesn't matter. Our last objective was clear, head to the cum bucket and exterminate the tiny one-eyed sentient green bean. I arrived at the chum bucket's door which was guarded by a group of anti-vaxxers. However, just like the coronavirus dashes its way through an anti-vaxxer's immune system, I sprinted past them in a flash and made my way into the final boss's dungeon. In a true Hajime no Ippo-esque fashion, I punched the salt water out of every fish inside, letting nothing stand between me and my ketamine. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Oh yes, Spongebob. I was definitely feeling it now, because I started using every piece of ketamine I had at my disposal, as the concept of speed and time disappeared in front of my very eyes. I sprinted past a group of fish who thought The Last of Us 2 was actually a good game, and finally reached Plankton, where an epic battle ensued. Mr. Krabs, you are finally here. Now. Oh my god, oh god, my only weakness, literally fucking dying. And just like that, Bikini Bottom was saved and the game was completed, I think? I don't know, I just got teleported to the outside. But yeah, it, it, I, I think it was completed, maybe, I don't know. I thought I was finally done with this game, but as I was editing this video, I found out that people actually speedrun this game. Now, I'm not a huge speedrunner, the only two things in my life that I've ever speedrun were anxiety and a crippling dependency on nasal decongestants, both of which I own the world record for, but I saw that people were speedrunning death in this game, like actual just killing themselves by by like headbutting the boat or something, so I decided to give that a try. So apparently the world record is 2.74 seconds by this Brian guy right here. Uh, I didn't really bother checking if this is the actual world record because I don't really give a fuck, but God damn son, dying in this game is more difficult than dying in real life. Like my first couple attempts were over 4 seconds, the attempts after that, I'm not even gonna mention them because the boat just kept fucking flipping over and flying off and so I got like over 10 seconds and 15 seconds, but yeah I think my best attempt was like a fucking 3.37 or something. It really sucked some crocodile ass. Oh yeah, I forgot to review this game. I didn't mention it was a review, but yeah, it is a review. Um, overall, I really liked it. 
unironically liked it actually um i'm a big fan of shitty games like this uh, and this one was free so it's even better but yeah um i think that the game physics worked perfectly i think that the fish models the three fish models that you had throughout the entire game was just they were really good uh i think that the voice acting was pretty much the highlight of this entire game the voice acting was pristine especially the one for patrick and uh, i think the storyline was good uh had good good turns of events happening there so yeah uh overall i think this is a 9 out of 10 definitely so yeah that's it for this video um if you enjoyed it leave a like if you didn't enjoy it leave a dislike i also stream on twitch every other day at twitch.tv slash oh uh link in the description but yeah anyway See ya.